This is Anna Hoffman with Traficology Blueprint, the blueprint to targeting and driving more profitable traffic. In the previous video, I walked you through the editing process I go through to turn a SlideShare presentation into a YouTube video. If you haven't seen that video yet, you'll see the link to it on the screen or in the video description below. Somehow, I decided you loved watching me repurpose content so much that here we are. Now I'll show you how I actually record my SlideShare presentation as a video. And I'll do it using ScreenFlow. So we're currently in my slide deck, Periscope on Android Tutorial Part 3. That's the slide deck we've been editing to convert into a video. So now it's time for me to record it. And as I mentioned before, I'll be using ScreenFlow, which is actually recording this right now. And later on, I will edit it to make two videos out of it. One of them will be just the part three of my Periscope on Android tutorial. And the other one will be a video that I'm making for Content Catapult at trafficologyblueprint.com that will show my members how I actually record a video. So here we go. I'm going to press play on my slide deck, take a brief pause and dive right into recording the presentation. This is Anna Hoffman with Traffic Generation Cafe, and this is your Periscope on Android, your A to Z tutorial, part three. Previously in this Periscope video tutorial, we've learned everything about creating your Periscope account, setting up your Periscope profile, and finding and following interesting Periscope broadcasters. In part three of this Periscope on Android video tutorial, you'll find everything you need to know about watching a broadcast on Periscope. There are two types of broadcasts you can watch on Periscope. One broadcast by people you follow and two broadcasts from around the globe. Tap on TV icon to watch people you follow. Tap on the globe icon to watch random people around the globe. Pretty simple, right? So what can you do when watching a Periscope broadcast? First of all, you can chat. Tap on the chat box to leave a comment. Also, follow what others have to say. You can also see live viewers count. And exit broadcast. You can also share broadcast. To do that, you need to swipe your screen up to see more info and then share broadcast with others. But be careful, not all broadcasts are share worthy. If you keep sharing everything you watch, people will start unfollowing you. Like I unfollowed the marketing dude who kept sharing these kinds of broadcasts. You can also hide chat. Tap on the dots to see the hide chat option and then hide chat. And that way you will not be seeing any comments on your screen, just the broadcast. You can also block users you don't like. To block a user, tap on their comment. Not that I would want to block mom23, okay? but that's just an example. Then you can block them to your heart's content. Here's a quick tip for you. When you block a user on Periscope, that user will not be able to follow you or view any of your broadcasts, chats, or hearts in the app. You will also be unable to follow or see that user's broadcasts, chats, or hearts. This seems like a good time to talk about Periscope hearts, isn't it? The way Periscope measures popularity is by the number of hearts any given Periscope user has. The more hearts you have, the higher up you'll go on Periscope's most loved list. Since you can only earn hearts while broadcasting, we'll talk more about getting hearts in our next video. But for now, here's what you need to know about Periscope hearts as a viewer.
Periscope hearts are like and unlike likes in that way. Yes, you give a broadcaster a heart to show them you like what you see, but you don't have to stop at one. Hearts are more similar to applause in that way. So when watching a Periscope broadcast, give the broadcaster hearts to show them you like what you see. Simply tap the screen to see the hearts float up. In part 4 of this Periscope on Android video tutorial. So, I clapped here because I didn't like how I said Android and I kind of get a little frazzled. So that made me pause. So, I clapped three times because that way I'll know when I do the video editing that there was a loud sound right in that spot, which means that I need to edit it out. So that's why the clapping. I'm going to clap one more time and then resume, resume the video like nothing happened. And then when I edit it, I just cut out the chunk instead of re-recording a whole new take of the video. So this is a much more efficient way to edit and save time. So here we go. In part 4 of this Periscope on Android video tutorial, you learn everything there is to know about broadcasting. I also encourage you to read and bookmark my full Periscope tutorial at trafficgenerationcafe.com. It's constantly updated to reflect all the latest Periscope changes. You can find my full Periscope tutorial at the link on your screen or in the video description below. That's it. I am done. The video turned out to be under five minutes, perfect for people with short attention span, which is more and more of us these days, to be honest. Have you noticed, though, how I took quite a long pause at the last slide of my video, my call to action? This leads me to a few tips I want to leave you with before we call it a day. Linger at your call to action at the end of the video for about 10 seconds. That will give your viewers a chance to take you up on your offer. Make it easy on them to click on the link by adding a YouTube annotation. Another quick tip I showed you during this video recording. When you make a mistake, Clap loudly three times, or whatever number of times you want. Go back in your script to before you made that mistake, and then continue recording. It's easier to edit out those mistakes than re-record the video again and again and again. For instance, you can see what it looks like in my screen flow recording of this video. And let me leave you with this aha moment. Your brain is a muscle. The more you practice content catapult steps, the better, the faster, the more efficient you become. This is Anna Hoffman with Traffic Blueprint.